everyone welcome thank you very much uh, for coming today this is the encode hack club final uh, it is tuesday the 25th of february uh, and uh, thank you all for being here and hopefully we should have some good fun today uh, thank you in particular to our judges who are joining us uh, we have some quite exceptional names uh, across both the investment and kind of engineering space uh, and they will be casting their eye uh, asking questions and voting on uh, who they think the winners should be uh, in the, the of the final lists. Um, as a general rule, I've said this about 18 times now, but one more for good luck. Uh, it, we are doing trying to make sure we don't have any trolls for this event today. So please, uh, if you do want to talk, as many of you will be talking at this event, um, you need to. Um, we will. You have to. You have to request to unmute by raising your hand, which should be very simple. Uh, you can then at that point either leave your kind of uh, yourself unmuted, uh, or you can when you next want to kind of say something, raise your hand again. A little bit clunky, so bear with us. But uh, we have had a few instances in the past, and we want to keep this a nice, a nice space of of no nothing going wrong. Um, Right, so what is happening today? Uh, two things. Uh, one, the finalists will be pitching for some top prizes that we as Encode are getting our checkbooks out to give out. And second of all, uh, sponsor bounties will be announced. I know a lot of you uh, have been kind of building for a long time now and really, really want to get rewarded and so you deserve uh, to be so. Uh, a few things popping up on chat that I'll just mention. Uh, very good. Uh, Victor, yes, winners will be notified by email as well. Uh, but you will hopefully find out today. Uh, so this is an overview of what's happening today. Uh, now I'm going to give a very quick overview of the hackathon. Uh, we then have uh, last year's hackathon winner, who's going to give a, a, a few a few words on on his experience. And we'll then have the the finalist pitches, and we have ten brilliant finalists. Uh, then the judges, and we'll talk about you in a minute, uh, will go away uh, to in a breakout room to judge, and at that point we will announce the sponsor prizes. We'll come back, we'll announce the overall winners, and then I would love to share a beer with many of you, but unfortunately we can't do that. So a proverbial beer after 65 minutes or so. Uh, so we're aiming to kind of be done in roughly an hour, uh, give or take. Uh, about Encode, uh, a few a few words. Uh, our aim, particularly this time of kind of big growth in the industry, is to bring, educate, support, and catalyze uh, university and hacker talent coming into blockchain. Blockchain very much needs uh, new talent and new people to come into the space. And hopefully that's what we do well. Uh, at least we, we very much uh, try to. Um, and we do this across six different things, uh, workshops, AMAs, hackathons, accelerators, and then uh, investing uh, and helping people find jobs as well. And our community now stretches across, luckily, six constants. Uh, and across many different universities and clubs and societies uh, who uh, help uh, help they themselves bring people into the blockchain space and we are kind of responsible for educating them and, and make sure they have uh, a good path to follow if they are trying to get into blockchain. Uh, I'm delighted we've had some wonderful sponsors uh, overall and in this event uh, and in general this is kind of what we we try to do in building a good strong encode uh, community. Uh, this hackathon has been our biggest to date, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, and we've we pretty much doubled what it was in the summer, uh, and uh, which is great to see. And, and really, some fantastic uh, kind of projects have been built, uh, and we're very pleased to show you them today. Um, it's I have to thank our sponsors. Actually, we're as only as good as our sponsors for these events. Uh, and I think particularly in a time where gas prices are a little bit uh, uh, troubling uh, for the average hacker, it's actually very nice to be able to offer some alternatives uh, to people to build on. And we've had three brilliant layer ones, a uh, layer two scaling solution, a brilliant Oracle, a privacy solution, a wallet solution in Portis. Uh, but particularly thanks to Pocatot, Avalanche and Binance uh, for, for their, their strong support on the gold side in, in kind of setting the tone for what people have built. And, and you'll see what they've built uh, today. Um, how has this worked? Well, it is unclear to say, I can say with, at least with anecdotally, I think this is the world's biggest university focused blockchain hackathon, it should say. Uh, uh, maybe we haven't quite reached the, the heights of overall hackathons. Uh, but the difference between us and other hackathons is it's 10 weeks long. We split that between learning and hacking. We believe that for students, you need this learning period and it also allows for slightly better projects, I think, to be built at the end of it. Uh, and in general, as per a normal hackathon, hackers have answered challenges and they will be rewarded by prizes. Uh, and, uh, and and such uh, such as as you would expect from a hackathon. Um, we along the way we've had some very good work events, workshops, AMAs. We're delighted to have CZ uh, come and talk to the crowd uh, in December, uh, and that was a particularly good event. We had uh, Emin uh, from Avalanche as well, uh, who gave a fantastic AMA. But throughout the whole hackathon, our sponsors have put on amazing workshops uh, to really educate the students, uh, and I know they are we greatly appreciate all their time investment that's gone into putting in uh, putting on. A good event. Um, a few words on what comes after the hackathon because that's a jolly good thing. Um, we, if any of you are looking for jobs, we now have encode talent and recruitment. Uh, we've already placed a number of you already, and we will continue to do so. Uh, so we want, we think, actually, what comes after a hackathon is probably more important than what even happens during it. And we want the best to get jobs. So if you're looking for a job, please do let us know, and we're going to help you. 
Um, we have our dedicated accelerators. Uh, we've just finished one with Algorand a couple of months ago, and we have two, one with Avalanche and one in a kind of DeFi themed one uh, coming up in the upcoming months. We're going to help you if you are looking to build a startup, really scale. And the idea is eventually you get some money from Encode Invest and our various other uh, kind of uh, investors who, who follow what we do. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, there is a precedent for success. Two hackathons ago, Reflexer, only came third, ironically, uh, and went on to do extremely well. Uh, they raised two rounds in the kind of time after that, have just launched and are doing extremely well. And Euler as well, who I will actually introduce now, uh, Michael Bentley, who was a postdoc at Oxford, uh, came in, did one hackathon, didn't quite finish, did the next hackathon, did finish, and went on to raise uh, from one of our wonderful judges today, uh, Roderick. So at this point, I want to introduce Michael uh, just to say a few words about Euler and his experience in the hackathon, because I think it is quite inspirational and template for you to all to follow. Uh, so Michael, over to you, Damir, could you unmute Michael, please? Uh, and let's let him say uh, uh, his, his two cents on, on his experience. Hi, yeah, thank, thanks, Anthony. Let me just share my screen. I've got a couple of share uh, slides just to show you. Uh, let me go to presentation view. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Great. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, thanks for the intro. Yeah, I'm uh, Michael from Euler, and I just wanted to give you a, a quick overview of, uh, of effectively where uh, what Euler is, where we came from, and uh, where we're going in the future, and hopefully. Uh, it's good inspiration for the rest of you guys in the hackathon uh, to see what the possibilities are down the line. Uh, so we, uh, around a year ago, uh, I, I came together with these fine people, uh, the three on the left here, to, uh, to discuss uh, a hackathon project. Uh, and that's how Euler was born, a uh, little over a year ago. Uh, we since... Uh, uh, yeah, created the protocol uh, in the, it, oh, yeah, in the hackathon, uh, we created Euler. And Euler is a permissionless lending protocol where uh, users can effectively come together and earn interest on almost any asset. Uh, so we uh, were inspired by Compound and Aave, uh, which are uh, being leading lights in the uh, DeFi space over the past year. Uh, but whereas Compound and Aave were offering uh, opportunities to lend and borrow just a handful of assets, uh, nine on Compound and uh, just over 20 on Aave, we wanted to create a, a protocol where users could lend and borrow almost any asset. Uh, and so that's where Euler uh, was born, really, from that idea. Uh, and since then, we've gone on to innovate in a number of areas uh, in terms of uh, how uh, lending protocols work. So on Euler, uh, you can uh, list almost any asset. Uh, we have a, a fair pricing mechanism that's inspired by uh, Uniswap's time-weighted average price uh, Oracle solution uh, that some of you all know about. Um, so we have decentralized price feeds. Uh, we provide a risk management uh, solution based on cross and isolated borrowing accounts. Uh, we've solved uh, or partially solved the front running problem with liquidations uh, by offering dynamic liquidation discounts. Uh, we've got asset specific insurance pools, which help you uh, earn fees on, on the protocol uh, and uh, provide safety for lenders. And we have uh, reactive interest rates, which I'll, I'll come on to now. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we came together and, and won the hackathon back in uh, September last year. Uh, and we really, uh, I guess at that time, we had just a couple of the innovations that I've talked about previously. And our main one was really the uh, reactive interest rates. I think this should actually be a GIF here, but it's not showing at the moment. But we built our protocol around these uh, reactive interest rates. And that led us to, uh, to uh, be over 100 of the teams. Uh, to the top prize in, in, uh, in the last Spark Hackathon uh, that was run by the, the fine guys at uh, Encode. And since then, uh, we uh, went on to raise a seed round. We have uh, turned Euler in from uh, this idea, uh, this sort of minimum product in the hackathon into a, a fully fledged company uh, in October. And then we went on to launch a seed round that was led by Lemniscap uh, and uh, included these other uh, fine VCs and angel groups, uh, angels and other investment groups. Uh, so Roderick is also one of the, uh, who is uh, at Lemniscap is also one of the judges in today's uh, final. Uh, so where are we today? Well, we've got our minimum, uh, minimum viable products ready to launch and we'll hopefully be launching a second round in the near future. Uh, I'd really like to encourage uh, everyone to come and visit our website and, and see our holding page. If you are looking for uh, uh, great teams to join, then I think uh, you should get in touch uh, here. And uh, of course, you should come, come check out our social pages as well. This is my Twitter handle and uh, the Twitter handle for Euler as well. 
uh, and just want to say good luck to everybody. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've all uh, come up with this time around. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, if you stop sharing your screen, it will allow me to. Uh, very good. Um, inspirational tales of, uh, of uh, winners uh, gone before. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Uh, right, I think we should get to the pictures. Uh, so a few moments on a few kind of what uh, kind of let's touch on, on what the process is and also explains to the judges what they need to do. Uh, so each team will have three minutes to pitch plus some time for judges questions and judges we very much hope you you, you come with insightful and, and, and sharp questions to test our, our finalists. Uh, we will be giving out on the basis of a vote that the judges will do uh, three prizes at £3,000, £1,500 and £500. There is also an audience vote. Uh, that uh, we have circulated in chats. Um, for judges, uh, we will you will get this vote this link uh, very shortly. Uh, Damir will send it over, um, and we again ask you to unmute yourself uh, at the end of each pitch if you'd like to ask questions, uh, or rather raise your hands, and we will unmute you. Um, so please uh, find the raise hand uh, functionality so you have it ready. Uh, but we will help you along the way with that, uh, and uh, you will be using a. Let's find it. A quadratic voting system, uh, which allows a better preference. Uh, our our Q votes, who are KCL students uh, who have done very well in our previous programs, have built it. Uh, and the effective number of votes you've cast is the square root of the absolute number of credits you have. You have 100 credits to give. It's fairly obvious uh, when uh, you get going. Uh, but we will send that through to you. Uh, but in general, please remember you need to raise your hand if John mutes yourself, uh, just so we can uh, avoid issues uh, around uh, trolls, etc. I want to introduce our wonderful judges now uh, because we have uh, quite exceptional, uh, kind of blows my mind a little bit uh, how good this panel is. Uh, but uh, just to introduce them very briefly, uh, we have Luke Saunders, who's CTO at Delphi Digital, one of the leading research firms in the in the space. Uh, Pamir comes back as a judge again. He's managing partner at Libertas Capital. Uh, Arjun, who's an investment uh, partner at Paradigm, who's invested in Reflexer. So we're getting a little bit of circularity here. Uh, Andrew Kang, who's one of the leading DeFi investors from Mechanism uh, Capital. Uh, Praneeth uh, from Consensus Ventures. Uh, we have Ken uh, from Electric Capital. Uh, again, Curtis was uh, uh, the, another partner. Uh, Electric joined us for a previous edition of the Hackathon. Uh, we have Dan uh, from Nascent, uh, who's one of the co-founders there. Uh, Roderick, who Michael briefly mentioned as well, uh, from Lenders Cap, who've led the round into Euler, uh, and Lubin Beloff, who has, I think, been a judge at every single hackathon we've ever done. Uh, so we have some, uh, some experience and track record there, who's a managing partner at Launch Hub and also one of the investors uh, into Euler. Again, we, we've nice and nice and uh, nice and all links together there. So thank you, Josie, for joining us today. Uh, please ask good questions uh, and looking forward to seeing your votes uh, at the uh, when when the votes uh, when, when we come to the voting period, right? I think that's broadly everything I want to say for now. Uh, I want to get over to the pitches now because that's the important bit of today. After the pitches, uh, we will do the around uh, while the judges are signing. We'll give out the sponsors' bounties. But I think without further ado, uh, we want to uh, get going. Uh, and our first pitch today is from Loot. Uh, they are a gaming and NFT platform on Polkadot. Uh, Brett, uh, the kind of uh, the founder there, uh, is a graduate from the University of Buffalo. Uh, and uh, is partnered with Tony, who is a senior developer at IBM. Uh, so Damir, if you want to unmute uh, Tony and Brett, let's get this party started and over to you guys. I need to stop sharing my screen as well. Okay, let me present my screen. Okay. Hi, today I want to tell you about Loot, a platform that lets you unlock the value of player-owned assets. I'm Brett Kolodny, a recent university grad, and my teammate Tony is a senior cloud developer at IBM. So what's the problem? On traditional game platforms, players don't actually own their assets. And while blockchain solutions can solve this problem, they're incredibly niche and difficult to use. And even if you get your platform up and running, now you're stuck on the network and its limitations. For example, high fees and network congestion like we've seen on Ethereum can undermine all of your efforts. The solution is loot a blockchain that is both easy to use and also free and open. We have developed two key products for making this possible, a dedicated blockchain specific for in-game assets and a software suite for interacting with our blockchain that is easy and simple to use. Loot is built with Substrate as a standalone chain and is highly optimized to keep fees and congestions to a minimal, scale for millions of users, upgrade seamlessly over time, and has royalties baked into transactions for game uh, asset creators. With the goal of becoming a Polkadot parachain, Loot will be able to interact with other chains on the network, increasing the scope of what assets are available. 
But game developers aren't blockchain engineers, and they shouldn't have to understand blockchain. They just need to use crypto assets in their games. Loot offers two pieces of software for interacting with our blockchain. For developers, there's the Loot Studio. Easily create game assets with a click of a button, manage assets, and track analytics of those assets. We also have a robust and easy to use API for integrating Loot assets into their games. We want game developers to stay game developers, not become blockchain engineers. For the user, we have Loot Chest, a place for users to store their game assets with an integrated asset marketplace. Let's see these in action. So with Loot Studio, we have a drag and drop functionality for creating game assets. All you have to do is fill out a couple of fields and with the click of a button, your assets are on the chain. Create and track game assets all in one place. Now let's see the user side of things. The Loot Chest, in Loot Chest, users can buy game assets that are in an integrated uh, marketplace. We want the experience to closely mimic existing platforms. Users can also update their on-chain identity as if it were their username on another platform. Heading over to the game, we can launch it straight through the loot chest. And with our API, all of this information is in the game with just a few extra lines of code. So what's in store for loot? We want to launch loot as a parachain in order to gain access to the entire Polkadot ecosystem. We would like to integrate with chains like Akala for the use of a sta their stablecoin. A stablecoin on loot would further streamline the user experience so that users don't have to worry about native token prices. And finally, we're looking to implement Ethereum chain integrations so existing crypto users can get their assets onto loot. Thank you for listening. If you want to learn more, check out our website at lootsolutions.netlify.app. Thank you. Awesome, Brett. Thank you very much. Now, the, the slightly awkward time of uh, any questions uh, from the judges, I think we've managed to unmute you all, uh, but please uh, do raise your hand uh, if you uh, haven't been unmuted. But, uh, judges, any, any questions from you? How, how do you think about go-to-market? Um, what, what's the best way to get some liquidity onto loot? The best way to get liquidity? So I think that the plan would be to have a native token on loot um, as a base point. Um, but like I mentioned before in our presentation, um, the, I think the end goal would be to have some sort of stable coin on loot as well, so that users who are buying in-game assets don't have to worry about things like native token prices going up and down, and thus the price of assets going up and down. Awesome. Uh, judges, any other questions at all? Yeah, have you thought about um, like what are the trade-offs between uh, loot and uh, other dedicated platforms like Flow, for example? So I'm not familiar with Flow, um, but if Flow is an Ethereum-based platform, I think one of the um, issues there is just the uh, network congestion and fees that we talked about before. Uh, the goal with Loot would be to automatically bring those down. And then with parachain integration and bridges to Ethereum, we could still leverage all of the different capabilities of other platforms as well. Awesome. Uh, this was really cool to see. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'd be curious if you could dig in like a couple more steps on that. Like, why did you decide to go with the sort of application specific chain or like parachain type architecture versus like just starting with Ethereum where a lot of the big NFTs and collectibles are right now? So the idea behind Loot is specifically to cater to game developers. We want the most streamlined um, experience for a game developer to the point where they're not even exactly, they don't have to be cognizant of the fact that they're using a blockchain. And building on things like Ethereum doesn't let it give us the same um, level of the same low level capabilities to have that streamlined experience be possible. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question in the spirit of keeping things moving. Any other questions, judges? One last point was uh, that I wanted to understand was um, if you, have you interacted with any, I, I guess, indie game developers and, and just, just thinking about um, potentially. Uh, uh, working with, um, you know, like assets from, from Unity or things that they kind of already have on board so that they can get, get those on, on, on loot. So the way that assets would be deployed to loot is kind of up to the game developer themselves. Um, what's actually being deployed onto the loot network could be an image of an asset, so something that you would see in a marketplace. It could also be an actual asset itself being pulled from the um, something like IPFS. The idea behind loot is less so storing of assets on chain and more so just knowing who owns what assets, if that answers your question. 
I see. Um, I, and our I, AP, sorry, and our API integration um, is using a REST API, meaning that every single game engine that I've checked has easy, easy capabilities of interacting with that. So pulling your assets and finding out what assets a user owns in a game is incredibly straightforward. Um, so that, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Brett and Tony. Great work. Uh, if you want to stop sharing your screen now, uh, we will get on with the second uh, presentation. Uh, so the pre second presentation today is from Teal Finance. Uh, they're a group of researchers uh, from uh, France, and they've built transparency tools uh, for your crypto. Uh, very good thing to have. Uh, so uh, this is Jean-Yves uh, Damer, who you need to unmute, uh, and uh, also uh, Barbara. Uh, and yeah, he's raising his hand. And once you're unmuted, we will get going. There you go, Jean-Yves, over to you. Okay, can you hear me? Can indeed, go for it. Okay, give me two seconds. Okay, so, bonjour everyone. Uh, we are Chill Finance and uh, we want to present our product, Transparence, which is a tool to improve transparency in the DeFi space and help users mitigate and navigate risk. Which risk you may be asking since we are entering a bull run and what we can call a DeFi spring. We focus on two of them. Uh, the first one will be the solvency issues. So we want to be sure that tokens are backed one to one. And the second one are liquidation that we know all too well since the last couple of days. So we want to avoid those kind of snowball effects. So to do that, we a team of researcher and engineer uh, made transparency to interact and explore many uh, blockchain and DeFi protocols. So DeFi made of bricks and one important one are, uh, is uh, PEG tokens. Uh, we know that the most important one of those PEG tokens are Bitcoin and other chain. And the main issue is there to be sure that you have uh, the, uh, the token are backed one to one. So what you do is like first you check on the Bitcoin blockchain that you have the fund. Then you check on the other chain, what is the supply there? Then you compare those two. If the reserve is below the supply, then you should raise an alert online on crypto Twitter on Reddit. Or you could also push that data on an Oracle system like Taylor so that a smart contract can use it and pause uh, trading, for instance. The second issues are liquidation that are in the news. Uh, usually what you have in those lending protocol and stablecoin is that uh, you have liquidation and user just manage their own position with looking at the collateral and their debt. What they usually don't do and that we usually don't see on uh, explorers are uh, so they, they don't take they, they don't take in account the position from the whole ecosystem. Meaning, there might be a pain price, a price at which a lot of those position will get liquidated, and then we know the snowball effect will be will kick in and with the gas and etc. So what we want to do is compute that pain price, so aggregating over all the loans in one protocol, but in more protocols, then publish it on a website or push it again on a an Oracle, uh, as explained earlier. So uh, to see more detail, you can uh, go on our uh, GitHub repo, where we uh, build in the Go language uh, the tool to interact with uh, so those protocols and those uh, those blockchain. So what we uh, produced was uh, we made the code to have an audit of those spec token. We worked on the liquidations, and we also look at how to pro to push those proof of audit on the Taylor Oracle uh, platform. So our future work is to support more blockchains, so uh, more chains and more protocols, uh, uh, more pro more DeFi protocols, and also we have been collecting exchange uh, of chain data. So we it will be interesting to mix those two and see what we can uh, um, learn from it. Thank you for your attention, and uh, we are happy to answer your questions. Awesome. Thank you very much, jean uh, Judges, any questions at all? Uh, please, usual process, please raise your hand. <coughs> I'd like to ask for, if you're already unmuted, please just go for it. Uh, Dama, can you please unmute Roderick? There we go. Okay. Um, how do you plan to productize this? I mean, it's obviously very useful, but for you guys as a as a company, I mean, what's what's your your path to to 
to monetize or extract value? Um, the first step was to like bring uh, to Akathon and look at grants from uh, protocols who will be uh, interesting having that transparency. Uh, for instance, uh, I don't know, we started with uh, the Keep Network. That was a previous Akathon we did before we joined Encode. And they might be interesting to have more uh, to be able to show those data to other users. And um, we also have been working on the side on the collecting ex exchange data. So that will be more interesting for traders, but mixing that with on-chain data will be, uh, so we can, we worked on an API so we can um, uh, do a subscription where people can have those data and at the same time the website where it's more open to, for, uh, for everyone to use. Awesome. Uh, any other questions, judges? Good, Jean-Yves, thank you very much. Uh, Thanks. Uh, presentation. Uh, right, up next, uh, we have uh, Float, who are a floating stablecoin alternative. Uh, this team is a little bit different. It's our first ever anonymous team. Uh, they are our researchers, but they want to stay anonymous. And so presenting today uh, will be uh, the aliases of Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, uh, which I've never thought I'd ever have to say. Uh, so over to you, uh, Paul. Thank you. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, Float. I'm Paul from the Abbey Road Hackers. We're an anonymous team of researchers bonded together over two core beliefs. One, the project should come first, not the personalities involved. And two, that stable coins need a bit of a refresh. Currently, crypto is represented in dollars. Why is this? It's stable, meaning we have a concept of purchasing, purchasing power of a dollar. What sort of goods or services I'd be able to buy? Ethereum or Bitcoin don't share this property because of their relative volatility. If dollars were just a functional hangover from traditional finance, that would be one thing. However, its purchasing power is being weakened by monetary policy. The scope of this money printer is huge. One in five of all dollars were created in 2020. That's a 20% increase in dollar supply. As such, we think $1 peg stable coins can be improved. The need to behave more like fiat currencies, the price of a dollar, euro or pound changes depending on demand and purchasing power. The need to relate to crypto assets, a true crypto stablecoin should be able to float as the demand for both it and the crypto fluctuates. And we need to do more than just float, we aim to be buoyant to changes in purchasing power, not just super stable, which means we can pin the target price to demand and shift accordingly. Float is designed to provide short-term stability while maintaining your long-term purchasing power, making it the perfect unit of account. How do we measure purchasing power? Well, we use the concept of a basket. This differs from some stablecoin designs because it's not redeemable, instead allowing confidence in returning to peg in downturns and profit opportunities in upturns. And this basket helps us generate the target or peg price. So what do we mean by short-term stability? We mean that the intraday, intraweek changes are minor, on average 0.1% from our simulations over various periods and adverse market conditions. However, there's a trick to this, because while on a day-to-day -day basis this change is unnoticeable, these tiny moves can build up to protect your purchasing power, meaning an increase in ETH by seven times turns into a 20% increase in float, a substantial but not unstable portion, meaning you can still use float to pay for goods. So we've gotten our targets, but how did we get there? Well, we correct the market price through Dutch auctions, allowing us to control the supply of float by burning and minting in a capital efficient, flash trade friendly way. Float is a two token system. Bank works to maintain the stability of float by absorbing the price difference between the basket and the target price. It also allows our governance token to incentivize holders to be active participants. Talking of active holders, we wanted to see if people wanted a crypto native unit as much as we did. So we ran a democratic launch to capture interest and engage people with the concept. Already, we've got over a thousand holders. There is a real appetite for a floating, low volatility currency. It's called Float, and we're only weeks away till launch. If you have any questions, we'd be delighted to cover them. Thank you very much, uh, Paul. Uh, judges, any questions at all? Uh, so Luke has a question, Damir, if you want to unmute. And we should unmute. Hey. 
Yeah, this is this is awesome. Thanks a lot. Um, just wondering what the plan is to to build adoption. You're just going to release it and and see what happens, or are you going like, to actively go and talk to Sushi, etc. I know you're anonymous, so maybe it's maybe it's tricky. Uh, it's a mixture between like. We've already got the interest, which helps a lot when uh, trying to get other people on board, but also we've got the treasury funds allocated to try and do some integrations and working with other people. That's our plan. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Lubin, uh, over to you for a question. What, what are the, the next uh, tokens that you plan to, to use for the vault, for the basket, and why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, so we use Ethereum uh, in version one, primarily because it captures quite a lot of the features we wanted for purchasing power. So things like gas prices or things that are things you can services you can buy or goods you can provide. In terms of next steps or who we want to integrate with, we're probably going to try and follow that services route a lot and see if we can get to things which follow that category or just general DeFi uh, tokens which are quite well utilized. So they're not going to be uncommon ones. They're going to be well used and a good tracker of the overall ecosystem. Thank you very much, uh, Lubin. Uh, any other questions, judges? Awesome. Uh, Paul, Ringo, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, if you could unshare your screen, it will allow me to share mine. Uh, very good. Uh, Right, uh, over to our next presentation, uh, Yupala, uh, who are doing gamified uh, identity uh, and Pisa, uh, a very smart developer from Russia, uh, will tell you more about that. So uh, Pisa, uh, over uh, to you. Uh, do we need to unmute you? Yes, we do. Damo, please can you uh, unmute Pisa uh, for a bob? Thanks. Uh, oh, Peter, yeah, over to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, greetings, humans. We are Upala, a price of forgery digital identity. Today, there is no reliable way to tell humans apart from bots in cyberspace. And in the real world, there is over 1 billion people without any ID. These are the parts of the unsolved unique human problem. Existing solution, solutions offered to measure the probability of personhood in percents. Our account score represents how much it would cost to forge the account. We have dollars instead of percents. Upala consists of groups. Each group has a pool of money attached to it and a list of members with their scores. The user score represents the amount of money that a user can steal at any time from the pool. This act of stealing results in deleting their ID. We call it explosion. The possibility of an explosion is what incentivizes groups to let only trusted members in, and it allows the apps to see how much a group staked on each user, which is a very valuable metrics for them, so groups can earn by providing the scores. But for that, they need users. Users need high scores. The apps need low fees. A market similar to insurance emerges, but instead of trading coverage for premium, in Opala, scores are traded for reputation, solved captures, deposits or other efforts reducing explosion risk. In the long run, competition among groups pushes the score to be roughly equal to the cost of acquiring such a score, which from another perspective is the price of forgery. Anyone can create an Opala group around any trusted community, verification method, or a whole identity system. But groups really start to shine when you combine them. We have some humble plans of creating a system which is more reliable than state ID in terms of forgery, but that's for the future. As an MVP, we've deployed this hierarchy of groups to Binance chain. Groups at the bottom assign scores to users according to some condition, for example, to all BNB holders. The top group here, instead of curating users directly, curates other group. This group is called Blade Runner. Now let's go to our multi-passport app uh, the, uh, and register an Upala ID. Uh, after that, we need to find a group that trusts us. Luckily, we are a member of Medicartel, and luckily, they auto assign $20 score to members. So let's join this group. Uh, Peter, I think, <laughs> showing the demo. Uh, yeah. It's not showing the demo. Oh, uh, you, you, are you seeing just the, the Yeah, presentation? just the presentation. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One moment. I guess I need right. to share the whole screen somehow. 
that's weird. There you go. Uh, there okay. We go. Sorry. Okay. So yeah. Mm. So mm. how do we? How do we? Okay. I created the the uh, the the Opal ID and joined. I got an Opal ID now and joined Meta Cartel Group. Uh, so uh, this uh, you you missed the steps. So you had you have to imagine that. <laughs> so in, uh, there is uh, there is also a D app uh, that streams a dollar a month to anyone with a score above twelve uh, in Blade Runner group. Uh, we already got twenty die in Medicartel, and Medicartel is approved by Blade Runner, so we got a score in Blade Runner too, and we can have the stream from this app, which is using Upala. Uh, but we don't want that. Uh, Medicartel believed that we won't sell our reputation for $20, uh, but they were wrong. We're going to explode now. Notice their pool size now, it's 1,000 die. Uh, $20 will go from this pool directly to our pockets right now, so we're going to explode. Uh, but we don't have an Opala ID anymore. Let's create, create an empty one again just to see how our friends are going. Uh, you see their, uh, their uh, pool size decreased by, uh, by $20. They are not letting us in anymore. And they probably either increased the efforts to enter the group for newcomers or decreased the score. This way, groups learn what their entry tests really worth. And this is how Price of Forgery Identity works. Thank you very much. My name is Peter. Uh, welcome to the Resistance. Would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, judges, any questions at all? Uh, usual procedure. Uh, Ken, go for it. Hey, Peter. This is this is pretty interesting. I, I like the I like the sort of game theoretic approach here. Um, what are you sort of looking at in terms of like things that this could integrate with, or products that this could enable, sort of down the stream when you have this primitive? Uh, there are could there could be many D apps that could benefit from that. Uh, for example, oracles, uh, uh, they can use proof of identity uh, or, or, or this price of forgery thing. Uh, then we can be a collateral. Uh, and uh, when, when someone using uh, the, the loans app, uh, this identity could be used as a collateral. Uh, actually, there could be very, uh, it could enable uh, a whole different types of on-chain apps, which are not existing yet, I believe, like maybe uh, delivery thing, uh, delivery, uh, decentralized delivery, or, or any, any type of the apps. Awesome, thank you, Peter. Uh, judges, any other questions at all? Uh, Praneeth, go for it. Damo, please can you uh, unmute Praneeth? Um, just, just kind of curious about uh, the, I, I guess, the, the onboarding flow for, for um, the, the innocent communities you have on board. Um, just, just, just trying to figure out which, which kind of communities would, would be incentivized to, um, to actually start using um, um, or being part essentially of the Blade Runner talk that you have. Yeah, that's an awesome question. Actually, uh, Upala uh, incentivizes any community to uh, bring their members to Upala, and this process could be done instantly. Just community members just push the scores to Upala, and that's it. Uh, and uh, we are already talking to Metagame, for example, Metacartel, uh, and uh, identity systems out there. Uh, so yeah, we'll start. Uh, we we'll, we'll start with this uh, with this community. But yeah, as I said, uh, any community is incentivized to join Opala. Uh, awesome. Any other questions from the judges before we we move on? Uh, sweet, Peter. Thank you very much uh, for your thank presentation you. and and well done. Uh, right, uh, moving swiftly on. Uh, we have uh, Team uh, Revert, who on a, a day like today, you, you might might be might be uh, sorry looking, but you do need analytics on your LP positions. Uh, and Mario is an exceptional uh, hacker uh, out of Mexico. Uh, so Mario, over to you to tell us more about Revert. 
Ah, damn it, you need to unmute Mario. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so uh, my name is uh, Mario. Our team is based in Mexico City. And our hack is called Revert. And it's an analytics tool for liquidity providers in DeFi. So liquidity providers can have their assets divided across different DEXs, okay. across different okay. pools. Share your screen, share your screen, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm not sharing my screen? Or not. I'm so sorry. Let, let me try again. Right. I, I did. This is there Are we good go. now? OK. Uh, OK, far away. Yeah, sorry. So um, as I was saying, um, the, our hack is called Revert. It's an analytics tool for liquidity providers on DeFi. Um, and liquidity providers can have their assets divided across different DEXs and across different pools. And to properly um, calculate the PNL for any one position, you have to take into account fees, the value of the underlying assets, maybe even reward incentives. And you also want to manage risk. And this involves being on top of different trends, like volumes, reserves, and the prices for, for different assets. So to help with this, we build this app. And you can access it right now at revert.finance. From here, you can connect with either um, your MetaMask or Portus wallet at the moment. For this demo, though, we're going to use um, the specific account. And what the app is doing right here is just gathering all the relevant information from the blockchain. So all the deposits, all the withdrawals, all the relevant uh, transactions like staking uh, rewards and claiming our rewards for the, for the LP positions in questions. One, uh, we, once we have all this data, we present you with, um, with this dashboard. And from here, you can see um, your open positions and uh, any historical uh, exited positions. For each one of these, you get uh, two sets of metrics. Uh, the metrics are on the left are relevant to, um, to your own LP position. So they'll be like the current assets, uh, the originally invested assets, any possible withdrawn assets, and the difference between this. You also get um, any possible stake in rewards, any gas cost incurred, and the LP tokens you uh, currently own, which, um, which could be staked in any arbitrary contract, and you'll still uh, be able to monitor um, them from here. On the right, you get metrics which are relevant to the pool itself. So you get uh, the three-day volume, the three-day reserves, the volume to reserve ratio, which is uh, an important thing to be on top of because it'll give you an idea of uh, in which directions the fees you can capture from the pool uh, might go. Ideally, you want this one uh, to go um, up and to the right, like here. Uh, the price divergence uh, is the divergence between uh, the underlying assets prices. And it's also important because it'll give you an idea of uh, which direction the divergence loss uh, uh, you get from the pool uh, might go. This one you want to see as flat as possible or, or like here um, to, um, to revert back down. Uh, the position log gives you uh, links to all the relevant transactions uh, for this pool. And the pool history is a nicer visualization of all the different uh, pool metrics. And uh, as I said, you can get the same for um, any historical exited position, in which case the assets value will be zero because they've all been withdrawn. But um, you still get uh, your historical uh, position log and, and your, uh, your, your different PNLs. So um, what's next for, for Revert is obviously integrating uh, as many exchanges as possible uh, to build an index of all the pools by different metrics, to manage entry and exiting positions directly from our UI, to offer hedges for divergence loss uh, with on-chain options and uh, personalized alerts based on your positions. And uh, that's all. Please uh, check us out on reverta.finance. Uh, we're live and on the Ethereum mainnet. And uh, this has been a great experience and happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mario. Uh, judges, any questions? Uh, Lubin, uh, Damo, please can you uh, unmute Lubin? There we go. So how do you see the competition and uh, how do you uh, differentiate? Um, yeah, there are a couple of, of, of solutions um, to try and uh, 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 target this problem before us. Um, that I, I like them. Some, some, some of them are good. Um, they didn't really match uh, what I was requiring myself as an LP position uh, holder. So like things like the... the uh, um, uh, volume to reserve ratio, which is very important to make decisions as, to, as if you want to stay on this pool or go out or enter to a new pool, weren't uh, something they were tracking. And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, uh, just a, a very specific focus on actionable analytics. And, and this uh, ties together with the, like the personalized alerts and maybe even going forward, uh, other options that are like um, 
allow you to allow you to automate uh, certain decisions based on how your uh, positions might be moving. It's so like a, if this, then that type of uh, situation. Um, but but yeah, like I think uh, this is a very new area, and uh, it'll, it'll be um, we'll be evolving uh, our our current solution as we um, as the industry itself evolves and as we understand better what our users are requiring. Awesome. Uh, judges, any other questions at all for Mario? Uh, Luke, over to you. Uh, Damo, please, can you unmute Luke? Hey, yeah, this looks really good. Currently, I use um, uh, VFAX for this, but it's quite simple and, and it's, it's, a, it's sometimes wrong. So I do see a, a need for this. Um, I guess the question is, do you have a plan to, to monetize it? Yeah, sure. Like, uh, this is definitely, uh, hopefully, um, something we'll be working on for the coming decade. So yeah, the idea is to turn it into a company. Uh, the, the, I don't want to focus right now on, on like the monetization aspect. I just want to get out as many users as possible and get out all the feedback we can to, to learn and iterate quickly. Awesome. Uh, judges, any other questions? Uh, excellent. Mary, thank you very much. Uh, great pitch. Uh, and thank yeah. you. Uh, let's now move on to our next uh, presentation. Uh, so now we have Layer Cake uh, Swap, uh, who are cross-chain decks uh, built on Polkadot uh, by Mikhail, who is an excellent uh, Russian-based uh, developer. Uh, so over to you, uh, Mikhail, to uh, yeah, to tell uh, us. Start to oh yeah, now it works. Can you see my screen? Hey, Anthony. Yeah. Yes, we can. You've got your the wallet on one side and the presentation on the left. Yeah, I'm correct. It's what I did. So, hello, hello, guys. My name is Mikhail Lazarev, and I'm a blockchain developer from Saint Petersburg. And today, I'm so excited to present you Lawyer Cake Swap. It's a cross-chain DEX connected EVM compatible liquidity, and this project was built from scratch, especially for and called hackathon so the problems what i'm going to solve i think totally two problems of course the first one is a high gas rates which really makes the file operation on ethereum very very expensive and yesterday i made this picture each swap costs around 90 usd and the second problem that majority of liquidity is really allocated on ethereum and protocols who are deployed on another chains has some challenges to access this liquidity. And solution, what I really want to show, it's a cross-chain DEX, which behaves like Uniswap and based on Polkadot network. It's like substrate nodes that consumes seven times less gas in comparison with Uniswap and connects EVM liquidity. So this DEX has really three strong competitive advantages. The first one, it's a really cross-chain DEX. So you can change different assets from different EVM compatible network. It consumes less gas than Uniswap and other DEXs and it's programmatic. So another smart contracts could make calls and exchange liquidity on it. In short, it's one DEX which connects multiple chains and in the heart of this solution, there is a Polkadot network based on substrate and it behaves uh, like Uniswap. So it's connected all asset, listen to different events and swap between other. If we could check in details, uh, it connects to each EVM compatible network, listen to events, update balances inside and if each person uh, wants to withdraw it, make a consensus and send money. And the huge things that it's totally native interaction with this system. There is no additional setup of wallets on Polkadot. You will connect only on your EVM compatible network. And here another feature, which is really interesting for many protocols because this system could connect Ethereum liquidity. So uh, let's imagine that you have a token X on Ethereum and it's connected to Uniswap pair, for example, token X exam, uh, against S. At this point, you can, we can set up a rule 
which would compute all balance for all tokens on other networks. So all different tokens will be considered as one token balance on uh, uh, lawyer cake swap. And it's create really amazing opportunity because you will have the same exchange rate on all networks. And if the something will be changed, arbitragers come to game and make this price the same. So uh, it's really crucial because for a moment when you use PEC token, you can't do that. And I want to finish my presentation with tweet what I wrote today. Keep building despite price fluctuations. Good products win in long term. And now I want to show you a short demo. Wait a second. How it works. So here you can see uh, swap things. This is my wallet. On the left side, you can see balances on Ethereum network. On the right side, it's my uh, balances on layer cake swap. This is pool, which also has Ethereum and DAI. And this is swap. And now let's try to exchange one S to one DAI. So I press exchange. I press confirm. And it's what I have to do. And if you go to wallet, it will be updated soon. So that's all what I want to present today. Thanks so much. And I am ready for questions. Thank you, Mikhail. We're ready to give questions. Uh, judges, <laughs> any questions? I mean, it'd be really awkward if there's no questions. <laughs> uh, judges, any questions at all? Yes, this is Andrew. Um, so my question is, how does the security model for the system work? Uh, how do you make sure that um, validators, or, you know, the listeners in the system are relaying the correct information and not stealing any assets? Oh, so it's uh, pretty simple because uh, the, I deployed a, a special contract on each Ethereum compatible network. So to deposit money, you should transfer money on this account. And it's continuously update how much money have. When it listens to events from different network, it's continuously update balances. And when some person want to withdraw, it waits some period of time when all uh, possible next events could be accounted. And after that, it creates a consensus between different nodes. It why blockchain on Polkadot is so crucial and this solution could be uh, could be done on back end because we have a, a consensus on this network and after that uh, the amount of money will be sent on network you ask money from awesome uh, question from Luke yeah I had the same question actually um, but just to clarify so you're running your own um, parachain as a layer two effectively uh, so do you have to attract a network of validators to, to make that secure? Yes, validators secure and also validators pay uh, stakes on different networks. So they put their funds on this network to become a validator. So we take all funds on the zero networks. After that, they become a validator. And uh, the, there are two things they, sh they should to validate. The first that uh, balance is updated correctly. And another one, they validate and uh, send balances to people who try to withdraw money. Well, thanks. Awesome. Uh, any other questions, judges? Excellent, Mikhail. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. And, uh, yeah, moving swiftly on. Let's keep things a moving. Uh, we next have uh, Sub Auction, uh, who are on oh, load screen, brilliant, uh, who are bringing another NFT one on Pekotot, bringing auctions uh, to Pekotot. And we have uh, Michael Repney and the team uh, from the Czech Republic who are going to tell you more now. Uh, so, able to you, Michael. Damn it, you need to unmute Michael. Yep, thanks. There we go. All set now, all set. All right. Hi, I'm uh, Michael, and together with Indrik and Peter, we build SubAuction. 
In short, SubAuction brings auctions of NFT tokens to Kusama and Polkadot network. We built a working prototype of a traditional English auction bidding with funds and token locking on the network. It's also possible to mint your own NFT token and upload the image to interplanetary file system. So let me show you how it all works together. First of all, we can start by creating our own NFT token. We just choose the representing image and upload it to the interplanetary file system. To store images on IPFS, we are using Pinata service. And now, now it is done, we can mint the NFT token. And the images of hashes are there. Now we can check that the token got minted and added if we are about to create the auction. Then we can see it's already there. So now let's create the auction, shall we? We do so by choosing our NFT we want to auction, select a name, choosing the initial price, in our case 50 subs, when the auction is about to start and also when it ends. Now everything looks good, so we can create the auction. On the page you can see live, upcoming and past auctions. Once the auction is live, let's move to Polkadot wallet to check that the NFT token itself gets locked and can't be transferred to somebody else at the moment. And same applies when Bob is about to make a bid. Now Bob's making a bid of 60 subs and he's bidding. We can see he's now the highest bidder. So at this time, moving to Polkadot wallet again, if he wanted to transfer all his funds to somebody else, the Polkadot system won't allow him to do so since his funds are effectively locked in the auction. Once the auction is due, the highest bidder is Bob. There is an automatic exchange of funds and NFT token between the highest bidder and the original owner of NFT. So you just witnessed a working prototype of NFT auctions on Polkadot. And that's pretty cool, right? Now for the future reference. We are just getting started. We'd like to introduce other auction types such as candle auction, more configuration options, and off-chain storage to keep track of auction statistics such as how many bits. And we've been already approached by two leading projects in NFT space on Polkadot. That's Unique Network and Codadot. We're super happy that we've been able to deliver a working auction prototype and big thanks to all the people that helped us along the way. And we can't wait to move sub auction forward. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Michael. Uh, judges, any questions at all? Yeah, um, do folks have to use subs as the, the currency to bid in or can they use other assets? Uh, well, not really. Let, we, can, we can use subs, but they can use also the other assets. Then it's up to us maybe to decide. But we were thinking about introducing our own token to pay for the fees eventually, you know, make the governance vote and uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, Michael, just FYI, you are showing your Discord. I don't know if that was intentional. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was it. Okay, good, good. I was just I was like, oh, <laughs> we have a disaster here. Uh, any other questions, judges? Sweet. Awesome. Uh, Michael, thank you very much. Great thank presentation. You. Thank uh, you. Have a good one. Right. Uh, moving swiftly on. Uh, do you want to stop sharing your screen so I can, so it will let me. Very yep. good. Uh, moving very swiftly on, uh, we have next uh, Zero X Mons, uh, which is built by Owen, who is a student at UCSD, uh, and it is Pokemon style GAN generated uh, NFTs. Uh, so over to you, Owen, uh, to tell us more. Awesome. Can I share my screen? Here we go. Start the presentation. Okay. Awesome. Hi everyone, today I'd like to talk to you about Zero Xmons, a cursed NFT platform. So first, a little bit about me. I'm a senior at UC San Diego. I'm the solo dev for this project. And Zero Xmons is a full-fledged app, this main NFT project, and also some assorted contracts that help bring utility to the NFT ecosystem. The main NFT project 
uh, are these zero X mons. So they're unique ERC721 tokens that are generated in a rather novel way. Um, the animation, which I'll show on the live demo, actually comes from a GAN that's been trained on pixel art images and then procedurally generated. The name, the epithet, and the lore actually comes from a modified language model that's then human edited. Um, and all of the information, the image, the data, the lore, can be encoded fully on chain. Um, and the distribution method is similar to Meme and that users stake an underlying token for points and then they can redeem them for the monsters. So this has already been live on mainnet for around a month. Um, 140 of these NFTs, so the first series, has been distributed. Um, they've been really popular on OpenSea. Um, there's a lot of people staking in the platform. Um, you can see some of the recent uh, you know, offers, bids, et cetera. And I'm going to jump right into the demo. So if we go here, you can see the staking portal. So I'm already signed into my address. You know, this is where users would stake their tokens. They would generate Doom. And once they have enough, they'd be able to redeem them to mint a monster. So they're all out. But if I go to my collection, you can see the one that I have over here. And this is the animation. Um, the really exciting thing is if the users decide to pay the fee to encode on chain, you'll see these two icons. So this one shows the static image fully encoded on chain. And this one shows the animated image fully encoded on chain. Yeah, uh, overall tech stack is pretty you know, normal. We've got Angular for the front end, IPFS, Node, et cetera, for the back end. Smart contracts are in Solidity, Truffle for testing, and PyTorch and Python for the underlying models um, that do the actual generation. So things that are next for the project are building out additional NFT tools. There's already a multi-sender that's live that allows people to lock tokens into different ERC-721s. Um, I've written out code, but haven't fully tested a P2P marketplace and other NFT staking type contracts. Um, the main next thing that everyone's looking forward to is my creation of the next series of the NFTs. And I'm also working on some exciting joint artist features where I commission them to do their own takes on these pixelated monsters. Um, and then we can offer the set as a bundle. Um, that's the project. I'm really excited to share it with you and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very, very much, Owen. Uh, over to judges for any questions that you may have. Ah, Ken, over to you. We will just unmute you now. Anna, hey, this is, hey, this is this is pretty cool. Um, I'm curious how you think about the the staking and the staking metric versus like just purchasing these things outright. It, that's a that's an interesting way to think about it. it. Feels like a subscription. Yeah, yeah. So, my original rationale was to follow the meme model because that had been quite successful, um, and I think people like this because it offers me a lot of runway in terms of trying out different NFTs. And it, it does like, as you say, feel like the subscription and that, you know, people can count on me to come up with like different interesting takes using this uh, like AI X human kind of creativity. Um, the other thing that's sort of useful about the token is I'm building out additional, as I mentioned, like NFT utility contracts um, that'll be free to use if you hold the token. Um, and I think that makes it uh, closer to the vision I have of like a broader ecosystem. Um, than just doing direct sales. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Praneeth, uh, over to you. On, on, on that notion that you just mentioned in terms of the additional utility contracts, was was just actually curious about the uh, the rationale behind, I guess, the multi-sender and what, what, what you're going to have in mind uh, behind these additional... Um... Yeah, so the one that's currently live on mainnet um, that is completely free for anyone to use allows you to distribute ERC-20 tokens to a list of ERC-721 holders. Um, so this is maybe in a case where you're starting a gov token for your NFT project and you want to distribute those, you can just input like contract ID, a list of those, and it bashes them in one transaction. You can also lock ERC-20 tokens inside ERC-721s. So this way you can sort of guarantee that there'll be like an airdrop if you're selling just the NFT itself. Um, and the version two, which is gonna be free for users that have the token, will extend this. So you can also lock NFTs inside NFTs as well as provide ERC-1155 support. Awesome. Uh, and then Lubin, over to you. Uh, so two questions. Uh, one is, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the go-to-market. How do you see the first users and how you're going to actually convince them and uh, what are the early adopters? And second, uh, you mentioned USO, but uh, have you, have you have, uh, 
any experience in uh, working with a team and uh, doing stuff with other people? Yeah, yeah. So as we go to market, like projects are live and people are paying, you know, several ETH for these on OpenSea. So I think I've already identified something that's valuable and I'm making something that people like. Um, the tokens like actively traded on Uniswap. We have liquidity mining. It's ranked on CoinGecko. So I think like market fit and consumer demand is like definitely already here. Uh, as for a team, I've worked with a few people on like contractor type basis to help with certain parts of the project. Um, and I think I'd be open to pulling team members, but I would probably be very selective about who I work with. Um, because I think one thing that makes this project so exciting to people is how much of my aesthetics are in it. Like I'm trying very hard to like not make trade-offs um, that compromise sort of the artistic integrity because that's like the core of the project. Awesome, great. Any other questions, judges? Awesome, Owen, oh, thank you very much. Uh, fantastic pitch. Um, right, uh, let me, two more to go, and then we're into judging and we're into giving out lots of uh, sponsor prizes. So next, let's bring flash loans into the mix. Uh, Vcred, which is uh, VGA's product, uh, he is an engineer at Bentley, Bentley Cars. Uh, he has uh, built a flash loans platform uh, for both Avalanche and Binance Smart Chain, which is quite impressive in a single hackathon. Uh, so uh, Vijay, over to you whenever you're ready to tell us more. Hello, everyone. Uh, just a second, just quickly charge it up. Yeah, hi, Vijay, presenting Vcred. About myself, I'm a senior backend developer and a machine learning engineer. I build trading bots and interest rate forecasting models. This MVP is the first flash loan project deployed on Binance Smart Chain and Avalanche. What are flash loans? Flash loans are no collateral loans where you take a loan, go wild with the loan in one transaction, and then repay the loan and fees at the end of the transaction. If you can't repay the loan and fees, the transaction reverts and you have to pay gas. The problem is gas because gas prices are unsustainably high in Ethereum mainnet. This makes flash loans or triangular arbitrage unprofitable. So what we need is new layer one solutions like Binance Smart Chain and Avalanche where the gas fees are low. This, this project was deployed on both the blockchains during the hackathon. So the flash loan AMM model or marketplace looks like this. This is different from a traditional yield farming marketplace. So in a flash loan AMM, you have bots and users on the right who pay a fee to perform a highly leveraged trade, say for example, 1000 times fee and use it for triangular arbitrage, et cetera. On the left, you have liquidity providers who get 70% of this fee for providing liquidity for this one transaction. The remaining 30% goes to VTRED for maintaining this marketplace and helping users create bots. So this is how it works. So I built a front end which showcases this marketplace. There's also a set of contracts, lending pool contract and a flash loan contract. Whole process starts by a user depositing money into the lending pool contract. So in this case, in the Binance Smart Chain, deposits like one Bitcoin into the lending pool contract. And this is a BEP20 Binance BSC variant of the Bitcoin. This money is now available for the trader, and he just needs to put in a small amount of money, say 0 0.001 BTC, which is about $50. And with this money, he can then use this one BTC and perform a triangular arbitrage. So he goes in and he looks at the analytics and he sees like a BTC ETH die arbitrage gives him $31. So he now does a flash borrow. That is he borrows this one Bitcoin and then it converts BTC to ETH, ETH to die, and then he gets $30 profit. On the other hand, the Liquidity provider, he has provided one Bitcoin as liquidity for this one transaction. And he gets a fee of 0 0.001 BTCB, about $50. Same procedure was done in Avalanche blockchain. Again, a flash borrow was done. In this case, uh, ERC20 token, uh, synthetic ERC20 token CRED was created to sort of simulate the interoperability. And this transaction is again, the first flash loan transaction done on Avalanche. 250,000 cred was loaned out and 250 cred in fees was uh, obtained to the liquidity provider. What's the next step? The future is to add more new uh, automated strategies, more bots, more cross-chain flash loans and add more layer one integrations. Thank you. Awesome, thank you very much, uh, BJ. Uh, over to judges for any questions they may have.
Final call. Ah, Ken, over to you. Uh, will I meet you now? Over to you. Hey, um, thanks, Vijay. Um, how much work in, so were you able to like leverage smart contract code from Ethereum to do this? And like, how much sort of incremental work do you have to do to get, get, get it on these platforms? So I had to do, for example, uh, if you look at Binance Smart Chain, then you have to do BEP20. In Avalanche, for example, you have to go to the C chain. So there is some amount of work which is to be done on the contract side. And then uh, there is work to be done on the bot uh, aspect of it, like uh, creating several bots, because they are the engine which provide this, uh, which uses fuel of liquidity. And uh, this work also was done during this hackathon. And it, this is sort of an MVP, which showcases. And uh, I found actually a lot of arbitrage opportunities and when I posted the code that is on GitHub or on YouTube, I had a lot of interest from retail investors. So there is interest on retail investors on this project. Uh, awesome. Any other questions from the judges? Awesome, BJ. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your pitch. Uh, right. We're about to have our last presentation, uh, and then we will uh, go into both judging and announcing the sponsor prizes. Uh, so uh, in about five minutes to say judges, uh, you will be invited into a breakout room uh, for some discussion and also we'll share a voting link as uh, so that will come in five minutes or so. Uh, and Damir uh, will talk you through how the quadratic voting works uh, and yeah, uh, your place will vote and then we'll come back and announce the winners. Uh, but in the meantime, we still have one uh, presentation to go. Uh, so uh, we're going to finish uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, gaming, uh, a no loss game built on Binance Smart Chain uh, by OpenDive, who are a team of uh, robotics uh, researchers uh, and engineers uh, from the University of Kent, Ohio, and they're bringing uh, some uh, some uh, of their robotics knowledge uh, to gaming. So Irvin uh, is going to present to us now. Uh, so over to you, uh, Irvin. Uh, we just need to unmute you, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's just unmute Irvin and then we can get going. Are we there? I think we're there. Irvin, whenever you're ready, uh, you can go ahead. <coughs> Hi, everyone. We're OpenDive Technologies, and we're a team of graduate students that have been working on blockchain since 2012. I've worked at firms like NASA, Goldman Sachs, NetEase, one of the largest Asian gaming companies. And overall, I was just excited about game design, development, and robots. Um, There's a bit of our work is really focused on immersive telepresence robots, so everything from developing humanoid avatars, as well as working on augmented and virtual reality technologies, and just overall gaming. And really what we want to do is we want to build the true metaverse. So interactive, interoperable games that implement cross-chain or multi-chain interactions. And to begin with, for the ENCODE hackathon, we built the No Last Game Arcade on top of the Binance Smart Chain. So it's similar to Pull Together, but we would say it on steroids and tailored towards game tournament rewards. So here's a quick demo. And the name of the, ga the game, it's uh, Monster Island Adventure Arcade. So similar to pull together, the user has to go ahead and approve. In this case, it's 50 BUSD for the entry price. We're going to go ahead and check the Binance Smart Chain Explorer just to make sure that that approve went through and to show that we're using Binance Smart Chain. And so once the user approves, they entered, they're able to select one of our NFT Little Monster uh, starter packs. So these are just NFT starter pack monsters that the user can purchase or rent out. And we're building a, quite a few different more. And so we're going to go ahead and select this little cute monster. And so once we select the monster, then we officially enter into the monster arcade. And there's a few different kind of arcade, no last arcade games. But in particular for the hackathon, we built a, a racing game. So there you can see that there's a full price up to 100 BUSD. And the game itself is similar to uh, Mario Kart. So you can think about entering into a week long multi-tournament uh, uh, Mario Kart uh, racing game. So we're gonna go ahead and officially stake so we go ahead and stake. And once this, this transaction goes, goes through, then we can go ahead and access other features of the mini game itself. And so just for the purposes of the demo, we actually implemented some AI drivers just to show kind of like the mechanics of the game overall. And so similar to Mario Kart, you have the same things such as destroying bananas and other obstacles. And overall, we're building different kind of mini arcade games uh, within this arcade, such as fishing, uh, fighting and a few other things. And as an aside, we're also building other games that are RPG and MMO. 
so really what we built for, for this hackathon was a state of play game that integrates seal farming and other DeFi concepts and also implements in-game NFTs. And in the future, we're exploring really uh, cross-chain liquidity as well as implementing a lending marketplace and also the integration for betting platforms to kind of be able to allow people to kind of bet on these tournaments that happen. So this is a bit of the things that we've been doing in the past and you know all these hackathons and things that we've been doing has been really the culmination of, of OpenDive, which is re recently launched in January 2021. And so if you're interested to know about our technology, what we're working on, feel free to reach out over email, Twitter, or say hello to us on Clubhouse. Thank you very much. Awesome, Irvin, thank you very much. Uh, for the final time uh, this evening, judges, uh, any questions at all? Uh, I cannot see any questions. I'll give it one final, uh, one final moment. Always say that a uh, good presentation uh, has the fewest questions because it's so clear. Uh, right, I think that that's that then. Irvin, thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah. Clearly, uh, as clear as water. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I move, I move on now. Uh, so we, if you could stop sharing your screen, let me share mine. Uh, we are at a crucial juncture in the evening. Uh, so now uh, we have uh, slightly uh, after <laughs> after schedule, and it, that by the way, it's not in about sixty minutes. Overall, winners of crown, a crown that is a. Uh, uh, a complete typo. Uh, but now the judges are going to be invited to a breakout room uh, where they will vote uh, on the winners uh, of the overall prizes. Uh, as a reminder, the three overall prizes are £3,000, £1,500 and £500 on top of any sponsor prizes you do win this evening. Uh, so I'm going to let Damir invite you over uh, to that breakout room. And in the meantime, we will invite the sponsors to the stage to announce uh, their winners. Uh, so let's just uh, let everyone... Uh, let all that happen. Uh, uh, so give me 30 seconds while we do this. And then we will invite the finalists, uh, the sponsors to present and give out their prizes. Damn it, I've sent you the sheets. Um, uh, Damn it, let me know when all the judges are in the breakout room and then we'll get going on the sponsor prizes. Yeah, sure. Just give me a second, guys, here. This is like, you know. Um, Elevate I, I need to kill the product manager of Zoom. This is. <laughs> uh, uh, this Elevate is, music while we are doing that. Uh, so, uh, auto play now. Sponsor bounties uh, will be announced. Uh, and then we will wrap things up with the overall winners and then everyone is kind of free to go. Uh, as a reminder uh, for everyone, if you haven't used the audience voting feature already, uh, we are using a quadratic voting system this evening developed by one of our uh, hackathon teams uh, in previous iterations called KeyVote, who have gone on to get grants uh, from both Algorand and Zillica. Um, it allows you to kind of have some preferential voting and uh, the effective number of votes you cast for a given uh, number of credits is the square root of the absolute number of credits. So basically, you get to allocate some credits and indicate 100 or so and in indicate uh, preference points mostly. Uh, and we will use that to work out who the top three are. Um, Mattis has re put the audience vote in. Uh, we haven't actually got a specific prize for the audience votes, but if it does differ radically uh, from the actual uh, finalist, I will discretionarily give out another prize. Um, just a word while we're waiting. Uh, so a few things coming up in the ENCODE community. Uh, Hack the System is our next hackathon. Intro event for that is this week. Uh, please check out the website. Uh, we have a DeFi education series accelerator uh, starting very soon. For those of you who want to learn about DeFi, uh, our, our, our next hackathon after Hack the System is Hack Africa uh, for a dedicated African universities hackathon, uh, the first of its kind, or at least the biggest event uh, since East Cape Town. Uh, and uh, we also are doing an educational series, hackathon, and accelerator with our ground. Uh, so if any of these uh, tick your fancy or tickle your fancy, uh, please do go to the Encode uh, Club website uh, and uh, 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 have, a, have, a, have a look. And we also have some very good AMAs uh, coming up. Uh, Mike Lanson from Framework, Seam Caressi from Dragonfly, and Arthur Brightman, founder of Tezos, uh, coming up in the next uh, month or so. Um, so apparently we have technical difficulties, which is uh, quite typical. Um, so what are the technical difficulties, Dana? Um, so let me just check.
Okay, good. Uh, I think we should be there now. Any judges lying around who should have been in the uh, in the breakout room? I don't think so. Judges, speak now. Um, ah. I know what's going to happen now. I can't unmute people. Give us 30 seconds, guys. We've found a breach in the matrix. Bear with us, guys. We'll just figure this one out. Uh, right. I think we should pretty much be sorted. Uh, so, this point of the evening, guys, uh, we are going to be announcing the sponsor prizes. Uh, we will start uh, with Avalanche, then move to Pocadot, then move to Binance, uh, then move to uh, Teller, Raiden, and finish up with Portis uh, to announce all of those. Um, so, let us figure out how this works. Uh, cool. Uh, good. Uh, now I'm back in control. So first of all, I want to go to uh, Javika from Avalanche, uh, who will be now uh, uh, announcing uh, the Avalanche uh, prize winners uh, in the Encode Hackathon. Uh, so over to you, sir, uh, in in space to tell us more. Hello. So uh, we had uh, two different uh, challenges for Avalanche. Uh, the first was the follow tutorial ch challenge. Uh, we award the 41st team that, that uh, managed to complete a, a non-trivial tutorial and award each with the $50 in prize. And I'm happy to say that we managed to fill all the 40 slots. And I'm going to copy the names of the winners into the chat. So if you see yourself, you have won a prize. Uh, the other uh, challenge was build an avalanche challenge. Those come with the more substantial prizes. The first place is uh, $1,500. Uh, second pl place is $1,000, and a third place is $500. Uh, the challenge was uh, to build and launch a decentralized lending app or derivatives app or uh, port some part of the existing Ethereum in infrastructure onto, onto Avalanche. Uh, first, I have uh, two honorable mentions by Imperial Blockchain that uh, made uh, NFT lending projects. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to, to finish in time. And then uh, the, the other honorable mention is Drago Plovanic, which uh, implemented the payment streaming on Avalanche, but also unfortunately didn't manage to, to finish in time. Uh, and the winner of the third place is Grip Finance, which made a, a lending platform that lets users uh, access uh, a portion of their loan to value, and uh, they deployed it on Avalanche. The second place was, and the second uh, was Sci Finance which is a money market a lending protocol designed to farm volatility risk. It, the, it's a pretty big project, lots of stuff uh, there and uh, maybe in need of a designer, but uh, very ambitious. And I'm, I'm hoping to see them come to, to full, full uh, operational capabilities soon. And the uh, overall winner of the Avalanche Sponsor Award is B cred, which are also in the finals, so we're rooting for them. Them being the, the first flash loan up on Avalanche, it was a clear standout. So congrats. Yeah, and 
that's it for Avalanche Sponsor Awards. Awesome, Rika, thank you very much. Um, guys, if you did do an easy tutorial and we did accidentally miss you out, it does happen. Things fall through the net, so do message me afterwards and we'll try to fix that because it was quite a long list and we've definitely just copied and pasted it from the spreadsheet. So if you did miss out, but VJ uh, and Grit Finance and Sai, very well done uh, on winning your prizes. Uh, right, uh, next uh, we have uh, the Pokedot prizes. Uh, another long list, uh, so Urban, uh, is going to uh, be announcing those and you've luckily uh, already unmuted. So Urban, whenever you're ready, please announce the Polkadot winners. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, Anthony, thank you very much for putting this together. Um, it's been a fantastic, uh, what is it, 12, 13 weeks all in all. It's been a long journey. Um, I think uh, speaking on behalf of everybody from our team and, and kind of being involved has been just fantastic. So, so really good job um, on putting that together. And especially a big thank you to everybody who's kind of participated. Right? That's, uh, th those people are the real winners. You and I are sort of just hanging by the thread there. <laughs> so um, so uh, Polkadot had three uh, kinds of bounties. Uh, we did something a little bit different uh, just because the way Polkadot and the ecosystem is growing and, and the tech is set up. Um, first of all, the easy uh, challenges that we put together. Um, I'm not gonna be uh, copy pasting any, um, any names here. Mostly um, I think everybody who submitted them, we tried to, um, we tried to give out a bounty. So um, me and Anthony can follow up with, uh, with these uh, individuals. In general, um, mostly uh, if you did a polka dot related challenge, you um, definitely passed. Now on the um, sort of mid tier, um, because the polka dot ecosystem is evolving with you know, polka dot in its, in its essence, it's a relay chain that gets um, attached parachains, right? And, and these parachains are gonna be specialized blockchains at the end. You're, you're gonna have your um, EVM specialized blockchain that, that onboards Ethereum projects. You're gonna have a DeFi chain, you're gonna have uh, private transactions, you're gonna have, you know, down the road, we might have industry specific chains and, and so on, right? For this hackathon, we had four of these, uh, let's call them candidates um, uh, involved, uh, Akala, Moonbeam, Fala, and Plasm. So uh, we got submissions, really good submissions for Fala and Moonbeam. Um, and this was actually judged by the Fala team, by the Moonbeam team. Um, now, starting with Moonbeam, uh, Moonbeam has uh, decided to award a 1K uh, bounty to Alejandro Adorin, uh, Adrin, some, something like that. Is, apologies for uh, mispronouncing. Um, and the Fala team has um, decided to award uh, the winning 3K bounty to uh, Monday Lord. So congrats to, to you guys. You've won the, uh, the mid-tier developer DAP. Um, on, on one of these ecosystem projects, uh, Bounty. Uh, but the sort of, you know, the larger category, the, the bigger one is build a blockchain. Uh, build, build a blockchain in the Ethereum, um, in, in the Polkadot ecosystem is done um, by using Substrate. Now Substrate is this blockchain, modular blockchain development framework and blockchains built with uh, Substrate are hopefully one day gonna be attached to the Polkadot uh, known as parachains. We have, um, we had initially first and second place here, uh, but because we got um, a few really, really good submissions and it was just really impossible to choose, um, we decided to split the second place round team. Um, and so 2K, uh, we initially we had 4K for the, for the second place, but we're gonna be splitting that up. Um, and these two go to standard protocol and sub auctions. Um, they were both really fantastic. Um, not just those, we actually had a, a few really difficult choices to be, to be made, but I think um, splitting that up is, is fair and, and really speaks to um, the high quality of these submissions. Now, in first place, um, it, at least to me, without a doubt, I, I really like this submission is uh, Loot, uh, Loot Solutions, Brett, congrats to, to, to the win. Um, I think we were all really impressed, not just by the, by the tech, but actually, you know, a really nice front end, a really nice, um, a really nice working uh, demo, really good pitch. So all in all, a really good solution. So um, that's it from our end. We're really happy to, uh, to see everybody of these individuals in the ecosystem. You've done uh, great work all around and 
congrats. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Urban. Uh, and once again, uh, I have the full list of Polkadot prize winners on the uh, tutorial side. So I'll publish those afterwards. But uh, basically, if you did the tutorial, you did get the prize. Um, so uh, this is a slightly weird one uh, because Binance, unfortunately, it is very late at night or early in the morning for them. Uh, so I have a video. Uh, so uh, we are going to play the Binance for prize winners uh, via video. Hopefully, you can hear this. Let me know if you can't. Hey everybody, my name is Joe Nance from Binance, and I'm about to announce the winners of the Encode Hackathon. Uh, if you recall, the challenge was to build the best DApp for Binance Smart Chain. And because that's a bit hard to evaluate the best, uh, we picked three that we feel that are uh, very close to that. So first place for 3,100 US dollars, that'll be paid in USDC, goes to Vcred. And Vcred aims to bring Flash loans to the Binance oh, no, what have I done? Smart Chain. This project utilizes the low gas fees in Binance Smart Chain to make use of triangular arbitrage use case and implement it for Binance challenges. Uh, flash loans provide a high leverage for hackers, traders looking to make it for the transient market volatility. And uh, Band Oracle was used to simulate the prices in the absence of actual liquidity for this project. Uh, Place number two for 1,700 US dollars is Open Dive. Open Dive is a DeFi, no loss, multi tournament arcade game built on the Binance Smart Chain using the Cream Finance for uh, liquidity pools. Users can join uh, any of the arcade games and join a term tournament by staking BUSD. And once the tournament starts, all staked entries are pooled and deposited into a Cream finance liquidity pool or other money markets using the Binance Smart Chain. The interest earned becomes the reward for the tournament and winning players can choose to withdraw the reward or restake for greater opportunities. And the characters in this game uh, are tokenized. And for place number three, uh, for $850 uh, is Upala Digital Identity. So Upala uh, provides human uniqueness scores to dApps. Uh, user account score is measured in dollars and represents the price of forgery, which would be the amount of money or effort needed to forge the account. And the score also shows how much a user values their account because anyone at any time can delete their account and get the money corresponding to the score. The score could be used for dApps as a very reliable threshold to safety, safely interact with a user. Um, and it can be deployed on any, any chain that's EVM compatible. So we want to, again, congratulate everybody who took part in the hackathon, and uh, we're going to look forward to what you guys build next. And again, congratulations to our teams of Vcred, OpenDive, and Upala Digital Identity. Thanks. Uh, awesome. Well done uh, to those three. Just to repeat, uh, Vcred, uh, OpenDive, and Upala, uh, finalists of BSC, all winning prizes. Um, once again, guys, uh, I think there might be a dollar uh, pound problem there. Um, so we will double check that afterwards. Uh, I think it was advertised as pounds, not dollars. It is a different amount of money. Uh, next, uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to Raiden on here today, so I'm going to say the Raiden uh, winner, uh, Remote Learn, uh, won the prize uh, from Raiden. Uh, so please contact me uh, to kind of arrange your prize uh, in in or to to uh, learn about your prize. Uh, now moving over to uh, Teller. Uh, so I think we have Ryan here, uh, who is going to announce uh, the Teller winners. Uh, so Ryan, uh, over to you, sir. Hey, can you hear me? I can indeed. Hey, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so would like to definitely thank you, Anthony, for putting this together and having us. It's been, it's been a nice, long, and awesome journey. I um, also wanted to thank everybody for participating. Uh, we've had a, it's been a tough time sorting out our winners. We've really appreciated everyone's awesome um, blood, sweat, and tears you guys put into these these past 10 weeks, so. Uh, thanks a lot for doing that. Um, so we had a couple bounties, but we ended up just um, coming up together with a just a kind of overall pot uh, in, of winners that will that we we have a grand prize winner, and then we have uh, some runners up that are each going to get five hundred dollars. So the <clears throat> for the runners up, we have um, Teal Dot Finance. They were actually they're a, uh, also a finalist. Um, the DeFi toolkit used using or uh, Teller for auditing purposes. 
Um, second runner up also getting $500 uh, was Ludovic Levalu doing the pool to play um, cross chain pooling for games. And uh, the third runner up also getting $500 was Ivan Malto with the celebrities on chain utilizing the uh, dollar amounts associated with the celebrities on celebrity bucks. So great job guys. We really appreciated the creativity and the, and the thoroughness that you guys put in your presentations. Um, and then for the grand prize, a uh, little drum roll um, is Maxify. So yeah, Maxify cross train bridge. Um, we really, really were into how, you know, the whole presentation and the, it was a simple bridge case that we thought was very um, implementable. So great job Maxify, you're getting a grand prize of $1,000. And again, thanks to everyone and thanks to Anthony at Encode. Cheers, Ryan, thank you very much. Uh, right, I think we only have one set of Swans prizes still to announce. Um, uh, it's a little bit of a tricky one because I believe it, it's kind of rewarding people uh, for actually having done it uh, rather than necessarily picking the winners. Uh, but we have Peter uh, from uh, Portis, uh, not Peter, bloody hell. You can tell I'm, I've had a long day. Scott from Portis, uh, I am quite the idiot. Uh, Scott, do we have you here? Do we have, I don't think we actually have Scott here, uh, which is wonderfully embarrassing. That's not any of our guys' name wrong, but he isn't actually here. Uh, but basically, rule of thumb is if you did uh, submit for Portis, uh, you have won a small Portis prize. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, and you can I will release uh, the list uh, later tonight then. Uh, right. So shall we uh, announce the overall winners? Um, so, Damir, uh, where are you, sir? Uh, should I close? Let me. Uh, I think you let's first announce, I think, the audience Twitter. So if you should can. I, should I close the judges room? Uh, you can close the first, close the audience one, and then you can get results. And then let's give, because we're missing one more judge. I think it's from here. But if he comes you come in the next one. the judges in the participant room now? I can't see them. So we do we this is like the only room now. Right? The breakout room is done. Okay. So the okay. judges are either gone or back here. So anyway, just close the poll for the audience audience one announce, and then we'll give the uh, we'll give like another. Right. I am currently generating the audience result, guys, and then we will generate the overall uh, results as well. And they go from there. It is it just says generating. So uh, uh, drum roll, drum roll, please. Uh, <laughs> if it works. <laughs> oh, if it doesn't work. Uh, so it still says generating uh, on the. Uh, I have got the. Res okay. I think I've got the audience vote results. They're loading. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so close. So on the audience vote side, uh, this doesn't actually count for much. It's purely for fun. Again, if there is some major discrepancy, uh, I will. Uh, we will probably award something retroactively. Uh, but uh, it was really, really close. Uh, and I'm, there are two, uh, well, very much close, but there are two projects who are uh, neck and neck. Uh, so according to the audience vote, and I, I have this might go to photo finish, uh, but we have layer cake in fifth, uh, loot in fourth, revert in third. Uh, this is the audience vote, remember, that's not the overall one. Ox one's just, but Xerox one's just behind in second and float uh, in first. Uh, so uh, that is the audience vote. It's only an indication. The one on float for winning the audience vote and Xerox one's, it's really like photo finish stuff. I might need to go and look at that again, uh, but revert in third there. But that is is simply a, uh, a uh, kind of uh, a starter to the main course, uh, which is uh, the judges vote. Uh, so I'm going to click get uh, results now and it will load uh, and then we will uh, Eduardo who made key vote is saying it takes a while good it's 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 building the tension and I have the results oh wow okay so uh, we have uh, uh, I'm gonna invite uh, uh, even though there are three prizes I will read out a top four because it is ludicrously close uh, so in fourth place and winning only a, a pat on the back, unfortunately, uh, we have uh, Team Open Dive. Uh, so well done uh, for that, uh, who, who built the no-loss game on Binance Smart Chain. They were second in the Binance Smart Chain uh, uh, kind of prize anyway, 
Uh, so well done to them uh, for coming in fourth place. In third place, uh, we have uh, the anonymous team. Uh, we have Float, uh, who, are, uh, who, who are building the floating stable coin. So well done to Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, uh, the, who, who joined us today. Uh, and they came in in third. In second place, we have uh, Revert Finance. Mario, congratulations. Uh, it was quite close at the top. Uh, and uh, you, you came into second, so well done, you've won a prize. Uh, Mario, of course, uh, building uh, a, a kind of analytics tool uh, for liquidity uh, positions. And in first place, uh, they may have been nipped in the uh, audience vote, uh, but they have won today. Uh, well done, uh, Zero X Mons, uh, for winning uh, the fourth uh, Encode Club Hackathon. Uh, congratulations, uh, you, you have uh, done exceptionally well uh, to go along with uh, a, a, what's been a very good kind of few weeks for you guys. Owen, congratulations. Owen, do you have any, any, any words of, of, uh, of, of uh, happiness? That's, that's super great. I mean, thanks to everyone's support. All of the projects are exciting. Um, it's, it's awesome. I don't have anything else to add at the moment. Very good. Uh, well, you have some money going away. Mario, are you there? Hi, yeah. How's it, um, how's it feel to come second? Thank you. That's that's amazing, incredible. Um, this is an, an incredible experience, and uh, thanks uh, thanks for the yachts and thanks for the organizers for putting this together. It was awesome. Awesome. And we'll go last but not least. Uh, Paul McCartney from Float uh, coming in in third. How do you guys feel? Absolutely amazing. It's great to see everyone. Keep floating, everyone. <laughs> Keep floating. Keep floating. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, awesome. Well, guys, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a, a fantastic, uh, actually, the hackathon is an absolute favourite thing we do. Uh, absolute favourite thing we do. And uh, I've loved working with all of you. And uh, kind of, we want to see you go on to great success, kind of building startups, getting jobs in the space, doing other encode events. So thank you all so much uh, for joining and being part of this. I will release, uh, for those who didn't quite catch all the prize winners, I will release them all as quickly as I can. Uh, after uh, this this uh, event finishes but well done everyone congratulations uh, see you in a future in code event and well done all the prize winners uh, and we will arrange your prizes as soon as possible thank you very much everyone have a good evening afternoon morning wherever you are and well done